Welcome to Sense and Nonsense A to Z, where we pick topics based off of the letter of the day. Today is episode two of season one, featuring the letter B. We're family and we're your hosts, A, T, and Z. So let's get started. Before we dive into this episode, I just want to give a quick shout out to a company called Adorama, who helped us out with returning some equipment because it came in too late. Okay, great. Well, I believe it was an issue with the carrier. However, Adorama made good on their customer service promise. So I just wanted to return a favor. Are you ready? Yep. Here we go. Since 1974, Adorama is a full-service destination for photo, video, and electronics, located at 42 West 18th Street in New York City. They're an Amazon seller, and their customer service is phenomenal. Their motto is, equip your creativity. They get an A-plus, five stars from us for their customer service, so thank you, guys. Thank you very much. While we're doing shout-outs, we need to shout-out to Bitmoji. Oh, great idea. First of all, love them. Oh, my favorite app. Use it all the time. Like every day, right? Yeah. (laughs) They have so many customizations that you can really let your personality shine. I love that. It's so cool. Yeah. I also love all the seasonal options they give you. Mm -hmm. And we've taken our Bitmojis and used them in our logo. Yeah. And like yours is almost perfect. Yeah. Mine is close enough to get by. (laughs) One day I tried fiddling with it and I ended up looking like Rita Moreno. I'm like, yeah, (laughs) this isn't happening. (laughs) Yeah, I'm really astonished by how close mine is. But have you seen Tommy's? No, no, why? (laughs) Tommy's looks like Robert Downey Jr. (laughs) No kidding. (laughs) (laughs) That's hysterical. Yeah. It's so much fun. It is. And it's free. It is. It's a free app. So if you don't have it, download it and play with it. You're going to like it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Thanks so much for bringing it up. We really appreciate them. We do. So let me begin by saying bonjour. Bonjour. Yeah. Six (laughs) six years of French. And that's what I got. Excellent. Excellent. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think I took French to begin with because I figured someday I'll go to Paris. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Like that ever happened. Yeah. Well... There's still yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I, then I'd need to really brush up on it. So yeah. Anyway. So but we've got that foundation. Going? Yeah. A little bit. A little yeah. bit. Yeah. Um, 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 oh, <laughs> je parle français. Oui, je parle oui. français. That's what I got. That's je m'appelle yeah, exactly. Z. <laughs> there you go. So what's going on, Z? Well, this week has been a little bit tough because we've been working on Little Guys IEP, which is a uh, individualized education program okay and and that's arduous under normal circumstances but having not have been yeah in the building for 22 yeah. months it yeah. it's been especially rough, sure. especially rough yeah. yeah so we've been working on that so much so that it like leaked over and we had to make another meeting i have to work on it today and tomorrow as a matter of fact before we meet again so there's just like it's just a lot it's just been a lot <laughs> Yeah. How's he, how's he doing going back? He loves it. He's done really well. I'm very proud of him. Yeah. He he fell right back into it and he's been wearing a mask, which is super great. Yeah. That's awesome. He's been doing his work. I mean, it helped that he went back to a building in a classroom that he knew with people in it. He knew. Yeah. Big, big difference when you're familiar with something. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. But he's been doing really well. I'm proud of the little guy. Yeah. Yeah. So what about you? What do you got? What I got? Yeah. Got 18, 20 inches of snow. That's oh. what I got. Oh, man. <laughs> and I know likey snow. I hear no you. Likey. Yeah, I hear no you. Likey. Yeah. yeah. Don't like driving in it. Don't like shoveling in. No. I know likey. No, you know? no. <laughs> the dog likey. Pup, the puppy likes it. Absolutely. <laughs> she likes it a lot. I, know I like that picture stand. you sent. Yeah, you like that? <laughs> yeah. she, she's adorable. Yeah. Want to get started? Yeah, let's get started. I'm going to get started with book club. Do you mind? No, no, no. Great. All right. So I love book club, but I haven't been for years because the original book club I belong to kind of turned into wine club. And and I've never been a wine drinker because I'm allergic to it. Beyond that, I want to discuss the book. And it was like 45 minutes of wine and chit chat and 15 minutes of book. And that wasn't enough for me. So and how every, much and how much drinking? 
a, like a lot like a, a lot. lot yeah like 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 a lot yeah yeah so i recently found a new book club which has drinking which is fine but it is book centric so that's where i'm at and the book that they've chosen is a 2001 novel by charlene harris called dead until dark Mm -hmm. This is book one in the Suki Stackhouse novels that inspired the True Blood series on HBO. So have you heard of that before? I've heard of the HBO series. Okay. It, it's, right. you know, the supernatural vampire stuff. It's kind of, you know, doesn't it, let me sleep at night. So <laughs> I, tend to, I tend to not kind of watch it, you know? All right. Well, this is a big genre for me. This is a big deal oh, for me. I know. Yeah. Let me just tell you quickly a little bit about the book. It's it. The premise is that vampires have, they call it come out of the coffin. They have basically revealed themselves to humanity and they're living amongst them. They call it mainstreaming. And the reason that they're able to do this is because the Japanese have synthesized a blood drink for them. So it's kind of like the vampire version of Ensure. It, <laughs> Does it have vanilla and chocolate flavors? <laughs> no, it's got like O and A and B. Oh, and so the, the blood types is yes, different flavors? Yes, the flavors, exactly so. So oh. it, it'll keep them alive, it's nutritious, but it's not exactly their preferred, you know? <laughs> they, they would rather bite people, but they don't have to, they can pay for that now. There's like mm. a service that can be provided for that now. So, so they're out in the open and uh, kind of a subtext to this is that they're now fighting for their rights. They're fighting for the right to vote, to own property, and they're also dealing with themes of segregation, separate but equal, mixed relationships, and all the prejudices that come around with that. So vamp vampires are people too, huh? That's right. They may be dead, <laughs> but they're people too. They're people too. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of societal issues that go on in this book that are that are being brought about. And it takes place in a rural small town in Louisiana. So there's lots of very strong feelings about stuff. So so it's a really good premise, but it's also an adult novel. For a while now, the genre has been a little bit flooded with like the teen vampire novels. I'm sure you've heard of Twilight. And, you know, and they're, and they're the vampire diaries and they're fine and there's nothing wrong with them, but I prefer the adult versions of these books. And one of the reasons why I wanted to bring this up was because on the first page of this book, Dead Until Dark, mm -hmm. she mentions Anne Rice. Oh. Yeah. And Anne Rice. And she just passed, right? She just passed in oh. December. I know. Yeah. And she's been near and dear to my heart for a very mm -hmm. long time. Mm -hmm. The first vampire book I ever read was Interview with a Vampire that she wrote in 1976. But I read when I was in high school. Okay. And it was so good, but so scary. Had my cat on my lap because I was by myself and I was so freaked out. But I didn't want to put the book down. That's how good it was. Right. And See, that's, I, that's why I don't watch it because I, I can't sleep at I night know, when I, I do. It, yeah. it, it can be, it can be scary. I mean, give sure. you something to think about, you know, sure. and I, I loved the whole Vampire Chronicles series that Anne Rice put out and it gave me this really grounded, respected foundation in vampire lore, which served me really well because for about 12 years with a partner, I had created some online role-playing games okay. and two of them were vampire themed. Mm -hmm. And since they were text-based, you need to write a lot for that to keep the users engaged. And I had written some mythologies, having that respected foundation to start with really gave me a lot of credit. You know, people really well you had good information yeah i mean they yeah. were taking what i was using to build upon and yeah. and and really liking it you know it yeah. just gave me this credibility amongst that fan base and mm -hmm. and that was really valuable to me so i just wanted to say even though she's not around anymore thank you and may you rest in peace i appreciate oh, you definitely <laughs> So all this has inspired me to go back and watch the True Blood series again because well, it's sure. been a long time, you know, and it's, it's, I'm having a lot of fun with it. Oh, cool. cool. Yeah. Well, talk about blood. This is leading me right into our uh, Sense and Nonsense 
letter B theme. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's all about blood. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm okay. ready. Yeah. Okay. So first, let me just say that I think most people realize that we have eight different types of blood. Yeah. So yeah. we have A, B, A, B, and O, and then the positive series and the negative series, which consist of a total of eight different. Okay. Yeah. So here's my questions. You ready for sensor, sensor nonsense? Yes, I am. Okay. The most common blood type in the U.S. is O positive. Sense or nonsense? Mm. I would have to say the most common. Yeah, I, O positive. I would say nonsense. Actually, it's sense. Oh. <laughs> it is, yeah, 39% of the population actually have O positive. Well, that's a universal donor. I, I didn't yeah. think they would be so popular, but I guess well, they are. Isn't that great that yeah. it is popular? Yeah. Do you know? So, right. uh, okay, ready for the second question? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a little off the wall, but sense okay. or nonsense? Cows have more than 500 types of blood. 500? 500, yes. Cow. Sense or nonsense? That can't be true. Nonsense. Actually, cows oh. have over 800 types of what? blood. <laughs> yeah. So here's their major blood types. A, B, C, F, J, L, M, R, S, T, and Z. All of our initials are in there. Oh, my God. And then with the, the group, there's 60 antigens. So if you do all the calculations, it comes, oh it, it equates to over 800. It's crazy. That's absurd. But, you know, I guess it would be difficult for them to find a match for a, uh, you know, blood transfusion or yeah, uh, a donor. Yeah, 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 you don't get a donor from now. I cows. wonder anyway. if, if different <laughs> blood types taste differently. Oh, you would have to ask. Um, a vampire? The, a vampire, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hey, do they do they do do they do animal blood too in that series? They or do. Or is it just human? They do, huh? Yeah, yeah. Ew. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But not in the not in the not in the synthetic. Oh, but okay. they do, you know, they like ew. hunt, like yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ew. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let me give you a couple uh, this one fact that I brought up that I thought was just uh, amazing. Okay. That octopuses and horseshoe crabs have blue blood. However, with the horseshoe crabs, the the blue is a protein that's called hemocyanin that transports the oxygen to the blood and that's why the, that blood's actually blue but okay. but more so that uh, scientists have developed this they extract the blue blood okay and they found that that is sensitive to toxic bacteria which leads into them using that to check for contaminations in vaccines what it's like how did they come up with stuff like this that's wild is that crazy yeah yeah so well, anyway another fact that i wanted to bring up because this involves you and me okay is that number one people with type o blood have the lowest risk of heart disease however oh people with b oh and a b have the highest, doesn't it? Great. Freaking bigger. Thanks. Yes, I That's come fantastic. On. We both have. We, have, we we both have big. Come I on. know. I know. Come on. All right. So I got one last one last question. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sense or nonsense? All chimpanzees have type A blood. Just just type A. Just type A. All chimpanzees. Nonsense. <laughs> oh. Come I on. These were easy. I thought these were easy. They all have type A. And gorilla, uh, gorillas all have type B. What the hell? How do cows have 500? Over, over, over oh, 800. Eight, 800. Yeah. How do they have 800? And, and chimpanzees and gorillas have one. Not a clue. <laughs> oh, not my a clue. God. Well, oh, I failed this version of sense and nonsense. I get yeah, it. Yeah, but last time you did really good. So yeah, I, I, I think you're batting 500. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Hey, 500 is not bad. Come on. Yes, yeah, I'll <laughs> All right. So, so since we're speaking of blood and some gross stuff with blood, <laughs> <laughs> I 
I want to talk about my pet peeve. Oh, okay, good. Because because I can parlay the, the yeah. grossness of blood since yeah. you just kind of got grossed out by the animal blood thing. <laughs> all right, so you go first, then I'll do my pet peeve. All right, all right. My pet peeve is barfing in film and TV. The act of barfing yes. or the actual barfing? Yeah, both. Both? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I cannot stand. This has like become like... Uh, a very commonplace thing that people are constantly like barfing on TV shows and in, and in films now it's all over the place. And it's a thing. <laughs> it, I cannot stand, this is repugnant to me. And I spend like, I know if they're drinking, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. The whole You're guaranteed. Time. Yeah. Cause if, if it only happens once, I'm lucky, you know, and it's the thing that I remember most. That's the thing that stays with me the most about any kind of episode or film. That's the thing. Not, so, the, blood, not the blood and guts? No, the I, I, I could not give a crap less about the blood and guts. You're kidding but me. But it's the bar thing. It's <laughs> disgusting it is I'm, just disgusting you I, don't i'm just so to used to in. barfing from the cats the cats yeah, but, barf like all the time yeah my cat does too but no the people people do it people barf people it's disgusting man and like the, the reason i bring this up is because it just it just happened on young sheldon recently okay. and the kid ods on candy and soda he's out of the influence of his mom for the first time he's in college oh that's right he, he's he's in college yeah. that's right yeah. yeah and he's hanging I out i haven't watched the new episodes yeah yeah he's hanging out with these new cronies and they're playing dnd &D, and he just he totally eats too much and so of course he gets a stomach ache. So you know it's coming. It's of yeah. course coming. Yeah. And he does. They don't show it, but you can hear it. And thank you very <laughs> much. I just friggin' ain't. <laughs> you know, I just got done with my dinner. This is not what I want to be hearing. It's not and when I watch young children. It's like, like contagious too. It you is. know, when it's one just, person oh, <laughs> yeah. it just it just turns my stomach. Like yeah. I am sitting down to be entertained, to relax and be entertained. I don't want to have to deal with this. I don't understand why it's become so common to put it in. Like it's a realism thing or something. It's like, uh, I don't need that. I don't want that in my programming. And what's worse is you can never tell when it's coming because, you know, they give you warnings for language or smoking right, or right. adult themes or yeah. photosensitive light flashing and whatever, but they don't give you any heads up about that. I and guess I mean, they think it's funny. It's not funny. It is not <laughs> funny. It is not funny. It is not entertaining. And I am perfectly fine without it. I don't mm -hmm. need that for realism. I right. spend my life trying to avoid this. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's it's just, oh, it's such a pet peeve. It's more than a pet peeve, actually. It's like, it really bugs me oh. that this has become a thing. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to let you know what mine is. All right. Okay. It's the constant usage of breaking news. <laughs> okay. All right. So these network news channels. So you have breaking news like at nine o'clock or something. Mm -hmm. And then you turn on that channel again later in the day and the same news is breaking. Yeah. Then three o'clock. Breaking news, same stuff. <laughs> Five o'clock, breaking news. Oh. Six o'clock, breaking news. It's like, uh, okay, how many times does news have to break? Uh huh. You know, before so, it's old news. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's built. It's built into network weather stations, and it's mm -hmm. built into sports. Mm -hmm. I just had breaking news mm -hmm. about Tom Brady, of which yeah. I wanted to talk about Tom Brady. Yeah. Okay. So. Breaking news. Yeah. He just retired. Yeah. Now, Tom Brady has had a hell of a career. Oh, it's, yeah. almost a Cinder it's almost a Cinderella story when you think about it. He was chosen by the Patriots in the sixth round, and he went 199th overall in the 2000 draft. Mm -hmm. So with the Patriots, he took 17 divisional titles. He went to 13 AFC championship games, nine Super Bowl appearances, of which he won six of them with the Patriots. Mm -hmm. 
And then, of course, he went from the Patriots to the Tampa Bay Bucks, which I appreciate because mm -hmm. I'm a Jet fan. Mm -hmm. And as much as I respect and like Tom Brady, you know, he had yeah. he had to move on from the Patriots. Yeah. Right? You know, having yeah. him on the other side was a it was a nightmare. Yeah. So then he went over to the Bucks in 2020 took him all the way to the Super Bowl and won the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. So that makes 10 Super Bowl appearances and seven Super Bowl rings he has. Yeah, the guy's got nothing left to prove. Yeah, yeah. Nothing. So arguably the greatest quarterback of all time. Oh, and yeah. I'm just going to compare him to who is right behind him in, those, in that category. Bart Starr with the Packers had five. Mm -hmm. Joe Montana had four. Mm-hmm. Terry Bradshaw had four. Mm -hmm. Love Terry Bradshaw, by the way. I loved, I loved all these quarterbacks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I, you know, and this last game that he had, I'm sure it was heartbreaking. It was mm -hmm. the divisional round against the Rams. And he's like the comeback kid. Right. In the, in the third quarter, they were down 27 to three. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the third quarter, you just saw Tampa Bay just kind of click. Mm -hmm. They started driving. Mm -hmm. He throws he throws a pass to uh, Gronkowski. He threw ball up the middle with um, Fournette, mm -hmm. and Mike Evans catches a nice pass. I mean, they were just clicking. He was taking them down with like less than a minute to go. He had them at 27 27 time. Wow. And you were like, okay, this is going to go into overtime. Yeah, you know, and it just had the feeling that he's going to he's gonna bring him back in well, overtime he's like famous for that he's famous absolutely for that fourth like i said yeah. come back kid yeah you know however the rams got the ball stafford drove the rams right down they kicked a field goal with four seconds left mm -hmm. 30 to 27 rams won tampa bay lost do you think that might stick in his craw though that his I last game thought, is gonna be I, a loss there was so much speculation on what's he going to do. Is he going to yeah. retire? Is he coming back? Is he going to go on another team? Yeah. You know, so um, good for him. He retired. I know that last game was a little heartbreaking, but it was a great game. Yeah. It was, yeah. Oh, it was a, it's a walk-off field goal. I mean, that's a great game. So here's our breaking news. After 22 seasons, it's official. Tom Brady has decided to retire. Wow. I know. Do you think he's going to go into broadcasting? Well, there's a ton of rumors. And what's going on is that there's a big rumor about Troy Aikman going over to Amazon. Oh. Amazon, yeah, Amazon now has the rights to Thursday Night Football. No kidding. So if he leaves Fox and goes over to Amazon, obviously there's a uh, vacancy there yeah. with Joe Buck. Yeah. And the other thing is that Tony Romo is getting all these accolades. So these other networks are kind of wanting to challenge the Tony Romo thing. Oh, it's a possibility. I, you know, I mean, you, you just don't know what he's going to do. If he's going to take some time off, I can see him taking a year off, but considering there's that vacancy that might yeah. just happen. And that rumor about Troy Aikman is, is very strong. So, um, so we'll see. Yeah. Speaking of Joe Buck, I, I just, he's been announcing forever. forever. And it, that reminds me of, of John Madden, just to say, oh, miss yeah. you. He just, yeah. He just yeah. passed yeah. in December. Stinks. He was, he, he was great in the replacements. John oh, Madden. he, I, I loved him in the replacements. <laughs> yeah. That's what, you know, that's yeah. one of my favorites. Mine yep. too. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Well, so, good luck, Tom. Whatever you decide to do, you've earned it. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we'll see him in five years in the Hall of Fame. Absolutely. For sure, he's going to go first round there. Mm -hmm. So that'll make it the Hall of Fame class of 2027. And since Ben Roethlisberger just retired too, I'm sure that they'll both be inducted at the same time. Mm, makes sense. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what Tom Brady does next. Yeah. Do you think he you know, I asked you about broadcasting, but do you think he might coach? Well, if, if he does decide to go that route, I'm going to say he's definitely going to take a, a year off. Uh -huh. But I actually did a little research on that. And there is one head coach mm -hmm. right now who was a full-time player. And that's Mike Vrabel 
from the uh, Titans. There's another one, Cliff Kingsbury. He's on the Cardinals, but he never, he was drafted by the Patriots, but he never played a regular season game. And what's really strange is how many um, coaches, now I'm not talking about head coaches, I'm talking about like uh, defensive line coaches, uh, quarterback coaches, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. have come through the Patriots system. Really? So, a lot. As a matter hmm. of fact, the Jets have one. Huh. It, Andre Carter. He came through to pay. He was a patriot. Holy mackerel! Yeah. So there's something. I I get where you're coming from. There's yeah. something to be said about you know somebody coming through the patriot system and being a coach. Yeah. Is it possible? I, I guess anything's possible. Uh, but I think the broadcasting might be more along his lines. Yeah. I I do. That's, that's cool. A, yeah. That's just a personal thought. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think we'll hear something within, if it's broadcasting, it'll be soon. Yeah. All right. If it's, if it's coaching, my gut feeling is that it'll be sometime next year. Well, maybe we'll have some more breaking news on that. Breaking news. <laughs> I know. I know. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Well, since since we're talking about retiring and we just brought up John Madden, I wonder mm -hmm. if this would be a good place to talk about um, Betty White and B. Arthur because we had oh. discussed talking about them. Yeah, we're we're kind of eighty sixing our favorite series yeah. and uh, just discussing some of the things that are important to both of us. Yeah, and ha that we like so much. So yeah, why not? Let's let's dive into uh, Betty White and B. Arthur. All right. Yeah. So. This is a tough one. This is a tough one. Where to begin with these women? Um, my first exposure to them was on Golden Girls as Rose Nyland and Dorothy Zbornak. You know, and I just... And you, and you know, with me was uh, Betty White on game shows mm -hmm. and then B. Arthur on Maud. Yeah. Oh, God, Maud. All right. <laughs> so I love Maud, first of all, but my son <laughs> loves the theme song to Maud. He will play that over and over and over again. He'll watch the show, but he'll he play, <laughs> yeah, he'll play that theme song a good five times before he watches the show. And I love that he watches it because the content is phenomenal. It's great content. I'm laughing because I remember the opening and Maud <laughs> just shows up and Maud just shows up and there she is again. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Yeah. I, I, I love B. Arthur. I, really I, I do too. She yeah. always played that strong, smart mm -hmm. character. Yep. She, loud. Yeah, loud. loud. God will get you for that, Walter. Or yeah. <laughs> the best one is, I'll tear your heart out. <laughs> so, she was oh so good. Goodness. She was so good in more. She, she was so good. And I loved the, the content of that show because it was a Norman Lear program. So he mm -hmm. cultivated that whole culture of, you know, questioning and racial equality and women's rights. And she you was know, a liberal boy. Oh boy. Was she ever. Well, you she know. started, her character started in All in a Family. Right. And they, then they did the spinoff and did Maud from there. Right. Because she was so popular on, on All in the Family. Well, I, she's, she's just so funny. Yeah, she, she's so yeah. funny, and the way she can land a line and then give the look—that just is just well, that's with both of them. That's yeah. what that's what made them so great in yeah. Golden Girls because yeah. you had both of them with their the the genius of their com comedic timing. Yes, and their and both of them had uh -huh. that had their look. Yeah, their look alone—it's it's hysterical. Well, it's, it's, it's that, and it's the way that they played off of each other. I mean, first of all, Betty White is so smart and yeah. uh, so is B, but Betty is so smart. And then she plays this kind of like a dumb, dumb on golden girls to be Arthur's very streetwise, smart teacher, New Yorker, you know, and the cl that clash was just priceless, it was. you know, it was priceless. And I, and, and watching Blanche, Rue McClanahan's character, just like grab Dorothy <laughs> grab her arm when Rose said something stupid because you know she's like playing for strength you know? that's right that's right either that or she's waiting for her for her to get out of the room so she could talk about her yeah it's like yeah. really it was it was just so good Ryan Reynolds had said that the the scripts for Golden Girls were only 35 pages long because they had to leave so much space for laughter and the looks like the looks 
they got their own sections in the script. That's how impactful they were. And I were watching these programs and they're still good. They're still oh, good. They hold up. Absolutely. 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 You know what I really liked with the Betty White character is all her Norwegian terms. <laughs> her Viking stuff. Yeah, Viking Viking stuff. stuff. <laughs> was, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> what a great show. It's just so good. And it was the first time that we really saw women, especially older women, talking about their sexuality, their dating lives, you know, worrying about their futures and yeah, how they're going to support we, themselves. And we took a peek into their kitchen table discussions. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. the all four of them were so brilliant. They were so they really good. Were. It they was really just, were. it was a phenomenal setup. But it was interesting for me to first have exposure to Rose Nyland to then go back and see Betty White on the meal. Mary Tyler Moore show playing yeah. Sue Ann Nevins, who yeah. is just a completely opposite. Oh, no doubt. Character. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah. She was a lot younger too, but yeah, yeah but no, still, no, I mean, no doubt. Yeah. She was so sassy and sexy, but, really. She was sexy on that show. Yeah. You know, did you, when I did some uh, research on Betty White, because we were going to talk about her, did you realize that the reason why she went into radio to begin with? is um and this is back in the 40s mm -hmm. is because the i guess the talent scouts whoever felt that she wasn't photogenic enough to do t tv isn't that ridiculous that's absurd and you know something I, that just reminds me judy dench had the same thing she was a stage actor and they told her that she didn't have a face for television or isn't film yeah you You're know talking about these incredible women how dare you i know I know it. And, you know, you got to think also, was that just an excuse for them not to tell her that she's a woman? Uh, we don't want a woman. You know, maybe, but even if that's the case, she stomped them because life oh. of Elizabeth was so incredible and so yeah. groundbreaking. And she did like everything for that show. She yeah. wrote, she produced, she sang, she did commercials. She, yeah. she ran yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. Did you see any, when you did some research on her, did you see any excerpts from um, from that show? I saw her sing a couple of songs. I saw mm -hmm. her do a couple commercials. Oh, so, okay. And, so you yeah. saw that. Yeah. 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 And she was like amazing. She was good. Yeah. She, she was, was good. so good. And she was seamless. She went yeah. from singing a, uh, a song on the program to right into a commercial yeah. to then Very doing like an interview. I mean, she mm -hmm. was incredible. And she was yeah. doing this for hours and hours. Yeah. Um, yeah. What I also liked about her, Ms. Betty White, was that there was a black guy, a black tap dancer on that yeah. show. Yeah. And when it got picked up and aired in the South, there was a big hubbubaloo about that. Right. NBC picked it up and made it national. Mm hmm And then the Southern stations wanted to boycott it yes. because of the, yeah, of the black yeah. uh, tap dancer. Terrible. Yeah. Just terrible. And she was like, mm, live with it live with it yes. was her, yeah that's yeah good for i her. mean good for her and, and she, i think she took that all the way throughout her whole career you know, i would imagine because she's she's quite the standing, activist yeah standing yeah. up for women's rights standing up for equal rights standing up for animal rights yeah uh, how awesome awesome yeah. lady <laughs> speaking of animal rights i saw her somewhere up there in her 80s uh or maybe even her 90s there was there's a little clip of her sitting with a bear mm. feeding that bear marshmallows nice. and this bear <laughs> is loving on betty white as if she's the teddy bear you know yeah. he, she she's first, first of all she's so calm sitting there feeding a bear uh -huh. and he's just taking him and licking her face and licking her and oh. she's just calm oh. and whatever because oh. i found out that when she was a kid she used to take these like month long camping trips with her family, with her parents, and they would okay. just live off the land. So she was so completely comfortable in the wild. Talk about down to earth. I yeah. know. Yeah. Right? Did you hear about the Betty Weight Challenge that they did in this, you know, in January? No, no, I yeah, didn't. For her birthday. Uh huh. January 17th, they asked people to donate to animal welfare organizations. So uh, I wonder how they did. I'm sure they did well. I'm, I'm sure they did. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure they did. Yeah. But she was on um, in this movie, The Proposal with Ryan Reynolds and Sandra Bullock. 
Okay. And she was Ryan's grandmother in that movie. Oh, and yeah. She I, loved- I haven't seen that, but oh, that, that it, sounds it, like something I'd want to watch because yeah. I like everybody there. Yeah, yeah it's, it's worth it if you if you if you can get it. Okay. Um, she did not like Sandra Bullock's character and she's giving no. her a real hard time. No, she's she's very <laughs> sassy in it. She's very, very quick. And she's given just giving Sandra Bullock's character a hard time every which way and developed a really great relationship with Ryan Reynolds and since that movie she kept every time she goes on a talk show or whatever she'd be like he's obsessed with me he's in love with me and I (laughs) I have to keep turning him down because I'm holding out for Robert Redford (laughs) I've heard Ryan Reynolds talk about Betty White yeah he loves her he he loves her yeah absolutely Absolutely. I think he I think he loved the Golden Girls he he oh, grew up yeah. on that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. Well, he's yeah. my age. So yeah, yeah, that's right about, yeah, right in there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I always, I always felt a little bad for her because, you know, I know she lost her husband when he was young and then Alan she never, yeah. yeah, she never remarried. Well, um, she, there was a quote from her saying something to the effect of, well, when you've had the best, yeah. what's the, u- what's the use of, yeah. Uh, yeah. Have you ever seen her in Hot in Cleveland? That, that show that she did? I actually seen a, a few clips of it, and, and I used to watch that here and there. I saw a clip with her and um, Carl Reiner. Oh, really? And it was it was just phenomenal watching the two of them work together. There was like no script; they just like let them sit there and do their oh thing. My God. Oh and my it was God. just oh my God! It was, he's another genius he's another boy. Another one that just mm-hmm. that just went. I, it's one of those series that I'm going to have to go back and look at because there are good people in that series. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like Valerie Bertinelli. In yeah, that me too. Very much. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of great collaborations, B. Arthur starred with Angela Lansbury in Maine back in the day and they both won Tonys for that yeah on Broadway that yeah that's I think that's where B. Arthur started I I think so too I think yeah, so I think too. she started on Broadway and Betty White started in radio exactly yeah. and their friendship was lifelong I mean that that show sparked a lifelong and Angela yeah. Lansbury, yeah 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 lifelong friendship there yeah awesome So whenever I think of collaborations, I think of the most legendary one, which is in music. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about our favorite band. Okay. Letter B, of course. Yeah. The Beatles in the a collaboration Beatles. of Lennon and McCartney. Absolutely. I've seen a lot of Beatles stuff on TV lately because of the documentary that was just released in November. Get back. Yeah. 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 Peter Jackson's been on those talk shows. He's doing the rounds. So I've been seeing... a couple of clips here, a couple of clips there. I've only seen the trailer. I haven't seen the whole documentary because I don't have Disney plus. Well, you got to have a kid for that really. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I know you've seen, I've seen the whole thing, baby. Oh, you, you've seen the whole thing. All of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. all seven hours and 48 minutes. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's a big one. It took well, me a couple of weekends to get through. <laughs> I mean, considering he had like a ton of footage, like like about sixty hours, yep, of, and audio like hundreds, right, right, right. So much so that sometimes they had to splice footage they already used together to yeah. like make a shot because there was the audio for it, but there was no video representation. So they tell you flat out in the beginning. Sometimes they're going to use pictures. Sometimes they're going to reuse the video just to show you who was in the conversation. Wow, and it yeah. took him. It took him like four years. Yeah, it took him a long time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, but it was wow. in good hands. I'm glad he, oh, he's the one who did it. No doubt. Yeah. And I got to tell you something. The the trailer is awesome. Mm-hmm. And it's it gave me goosebumps. Yeah. And it, it also choked me up. Oh, yeah. See, seeing them, you know, I mean, it's like brings back so many memories. Well, you know, for me, it was incredible to watch these people that have been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. Well, sure. You know? And they were just being who they were after such a long time away. Like I haven't seen them in so long. Yeah. You know, it's not the same as watching a movie because it's just them being them interacting with each other in a, mm-hmm. in a raw way. Right. So it was just amazing to watch. It's almost like bringing out family footage. Yes. You know, for, yeah. 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 Yes. It's cool. like home movies. That's what yeah, it was yeah, yeah. like. Yeah. yeah. But cool. the, I mean, for people who you've known, as long yeah. as you've known your family. It's not like we know them. But right. We know what we, we know, know them. them. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like their family. When it you is. Think about it. Yeah. You, they've, Extended. Brought, 
Right. You yeah. brought them into your home, you know, onto your stereo, onto yeah. your TV. Yeah. Yeah. Into your life in so many ways and, and in really meaningful ways as well. Yeah. Not just, you know, superficially, like deep, meaningful ways, like sure. bawling your eyes out kind sure. of ways. Well, music will do that to you. Absolutely. So if you're, if you're into the Beatles or into song making at all, Mm -hmm. It's definitely eye-opening to watch these guys just be geniuses at work. And it is oh. worth your time. But I, if you're, I've got, I've got to see this. I know we've, we've yeah. got to, you, we've got to pull a marvelous Mrs. Major. You got to come over. But if, <laughs> if like for viewers that are, yeah, <laughs> if you're not really into song making, because it, it, it can be a little tedious. There's a lot of repetition into making these songs work out. Sure. Um, watch the last episode because it's a three-part series. In that last episode, it's less repetition because they've got a lot worked out. And you see them, they're more comfortable. They've mm -hmm. kind of settled into what they're doing and they're kind of reaching the end. Sure. And you can see they're goofing around with each other more. Well, well they were and, just silly. Well, they were silly, but they were also serious. I mean, I, I would say it's probably a Mm, maybe a 60 40 split with goofy with, with, and serious goof, yeah on goof, the goofy, goofy. side <laughs> yeah because sometimes it, it was I was like it's amazing they ever got anything done yeah. but then when they yeah. were like working they were working so oh, I, can, I can see that have you ever seen any of their movies like yeah Hope of or, course yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I mean but you could see different. how silly they were oh well yeah I mean yeah <laughs> They were supposed to be being silly then. Oh, exactly. You so know. guys, just be silly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but but they weren't always in this. I mean, they were there were some times when it was pretty intense. Watching John and Paul is an incredible thing. They 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 knew each other for so long that they had this shorthand that it was to the point where you almost couldn't follow it because they weren't saying anything. What like they were telepathic? kind of they're like like, like to almost each a other. twins like almost a twin thing yeah right? like yeah. they're talking to each other but they're not saying anything yeah for real but by yeah. the end of the conversation they both know what just happened mm -hmm. it's it, it's incredible to watch and you gotta think that it must have been kind of isolating for George Harrison and Ringo Starr because they were kind of left out of that. I know they weren't, you know, so much involved in the song making for a long time. Right. But there is a definite dynamic between Paul McCartney and John Lennon. Like the two of well, them had like a soulmate brother thing happening there. Lennon and McCartney. There yeah. you go. Yeah. yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. You know, I got to tell you, I'll never forget when... Um, they played on the Ed Sullivan show the first time. Mm -hmm. In fact, it was your dad came home from school mm -hmm. and told us, oh, we got to watch Ed Sullivan on Sunday. Yeah. And uh, there's this new band. They're called the Beatles. We got to watch them. Yeah. And we all gathered around the TV waiting for Ed Sullivan. I think it was on at eight o'clock on CBS. Um, and it was so powerful. And the girls were just screaming. Uh-huh that I don't even know if any of us fell asleep after that, but I can remember the next day of school and I was in first grade, mm -hmm. went to school and that's all we were all talking about. We were talking about the Beatles. Mm -hmm. In fact, in fact, my um, first grade school, the class picture, mm -hmm. one of the kids, we all loved the Beatles, you know, yeah. at that time. Yeah. One of the kids had this huge, huge pin. I mean, you know, a little kid with like a, a, a six inch diameter pin <laughs> on him. And you could see it in the class picture. It's like, you're, it's a beetle pin. Yeah. Know? Yeah. So uh, that's how impactful they were to, to all of us during that time. Sure. Well, my mom has told me stories about watching the Ed Sullivan show when the Beatles were on mm -hmm. and everybody watched. All yeah. the kids watched, all the adults yeah. watched, and they were on a couple of times. And if they were out over somebody else's house for dinner or whatnot, when the Ed Sullivan show came on, everybody stopped, everybody yeah. sat down, and everybody yeah. watched. And it's incredible that the reach that they had was from a first generation? grader. Yeah, generation. Yeah. And as yeah. a matter of fact, in Get Back, they when they finally do the concert on the rooftop at the end, Love that concert. Yeah, I mean it was great. It got that they got shut down by the cops. 
<sighs> you know, when I watched the trailer, they were talking about wanting to do a concert where you're not supposed to. So yeah. they kind of they kind of wanted to have something like off limits that yeah. they they but they knew that they would get away with it because they're the Beatles. Well, they didn't get away with it. I mean, the their road manager, Mal Evans, he stalled for as long as possible, really. I mean, the cops showed up pretty quick. On the, the, the people at the street level, there was a guy with a microphone asking people on the street, do you like this, what's happening? And all kinds of people, some people said, no, they're disturbing really? the peace. Yeah, they're disturbing oh, the peace yeah. and whatever. But the majority you're, you're of people- You're always gonna have somebody, I know, right? They were complaining. <laughs> Um, but the majority of people were delighted by it. And mm -hmm. those people ranged from like teens to older folks, 80 years old, saying, oh, yeah, I love the Beatles. Yeah, they're great. They're this. And as a matter of fact, one of the people was this older man. And the interviewer asked him, would you want one of your daughters to date a Beatle? And he was like, of course. <laughs> you know, they're good guys and they've got money. <laughs> Of course I would. <laughs> but but it was it, it's a, such a good documentary. And especially in the last uh the last section of it, you really see them being comfortable but also drifting apart from one another. Oh, you can really sure, see that. Sure. Um I mean earlier George, well, George Harrison, left. Yeah. George left during that taping, yeah. Exactly. And I didn't yeah. know that happened, but he did. And they had to talk I, I to did him. because Peter Jackson mentioned it when yes. he was doing the rounds and I was watching him. Yeah. Yeah. They had to, they went and talked to him the first time and that was a no go. It took, it took two sessions to convince him to come back. And then later on in, in this third installment, he's talking to John about wanting to do something by himself wanting to do an album with just his own songs on it so there were rumblings you know yeah you know you gotta Yoko, admit I, I love george harrison's stuff too i do too i do too i, I love yeah, them all i love, I love absolutely them all. individually all together i love them all absolutely i agree 100 yeah. percent. and um you know yoko's in there and mm -hmm. she is right up in there with the band the whole time you know, the other wives are kind of sitting in the back, but she's right there, right next yeah, to John. Her, huh? No, yeah. no. Right yeah. between uh, John and Paul, you know, I got to, I got to see this sitting somehow. right in yeah. there. And, uh, you know, her presence is intrusive. She doesn't say much. She doesn't do much, but she's there. And you, you just got to you know, think that helped make the wedge bigger. You know, it's hard to collaborate with a bandmate when you have interference in between. Yeah. It's just very hard. It is. It's tough. It's yeah. tough. I mean, I, I dated a guy who was in a band for, for a long time, for years and years. And, you know, we were at band practice every week and we were in the studio and all the girlfriends and everything were together, but you just give them space. You don't sit up with them. You give them the space that they need to work what they need out. And when sure. you're in the studio, you're there, but you're in the background and you, you're supportive and you give your opinion when they ask or when it's well, needed. And that's, but, and that's what you're supposed to yeah. do when you're, you're, you're the other half. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. you stay in the background and when you're asked, that's, that's when you, uh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So when I was in a band, no spouses, no girlfriends, no boyfriends. Nope. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Not at all. Not yeah. at all. It was just the band and that's it. I get that. But you know, we were younger and growing up together, mm -hmm. we didn't have that kind of thing, you know, um, but we didn't really need to because you just, you just hung back. Well, I was, I was in bands when I was like 17, 18. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, I, we boyfriends and girlfriends. No, not allowed. <laughs> oh no, we never had that, but, no, but it was never an issue. Even yeah. they even had, um, Linda, Linda McCartney before that they were married. They had, um, her little girl, Heather was in yeah. the studio yeah, with yeah, them yeah, running yeah. around. Yeah. First yeah. of all, she's That's a darling. In the trailer. Yeah. That's in the, yeah. She's a darling. And, she was um, adorable. she, yeah, she had the run of the place and she had all of them wrapped around her little finger. <laughs> um, it was so cute, but she, Yoko was singing, doing her guttural singing. What? Ah! Yeah. She's not even singing, but doing that. And Heather saw her do it. And so then she started doing it in the microphone. Oh, no it kidding. was really cute. But the, the thing is really funny because John's teasing her about eating cats. 
She's like, no, you can't eat cats. And he's like, oh, people eat cats. They're good. You know, she's like, no, oh my no, God. my cat has spots. He's like, oh, well, you don't eat the ones with spots. <laughs> you know oh. he's like, yeah, he's totally busting her chops. And yeah, he had a great it, sense of humor. They yeah, all did. They, they all, all did. They all did. Exactly. I think George less. George yeah. is more quiet. Yeah. I had yeah. seen him on an interview with Dick Cavett. And he went on. He's like, you know, I really have nothing to say. I'm pretty boring, you know. Yeah. And Dick Cavett's like, yeah, I'll fill it in. Don't yeah, worry. yeah. He, he, I would say so, but he's not without his sense of humor. I mean, right. he, he, it, right. it, you can see it in this. He's silly, just to, like yeah. the rest of them. Yeah. Um, I've seen the rooftop concerts a couple of times, mm -hmm. and I just got breaking news here. Oh, breaking news! <laughs> breaking news from hubby. Okay, gave me, gave me a little note that that rooftop concert's going to be on TV in a this week. So oh. I, got, I got to look that up. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's it's forty two minutes long, and you can see they're just freezing. They're just freezing. Oh up there. yeah, they're yeah. freezing. Yeah. You know, even John says at one point, like I don't know if I can play chords anymore. My hands are so cold. <sighs> Before the cops shut them down, mm -hmm. it was really fun to see them playing they looked like they it's their last one but they looked like they were having a really good time you know oh yeah and, and it was really nice to see that their well, final one was a good one you know it was well, it was kind of improv too i mean it was up to the last minute they were making this decision because paul didn't want to do it so oh, no kidding really no but john and ringo wanted to do it because paul and george didn't want to do it so i don't know what transpired to like turn the tide on that yeah but yeah. um so but they were all having fun they had fun i i was so impressed with them bringing in billy preston oh yeah because he was just he just added so much and it, yeah. it just it just showed not only the genius of the beatles but the genius of billy preston too absolutely i he mean he just right he just jumped right in absolutely yeah and, i love i love that yeah. collaboration with him he, you know he was the fifth beetle he was and they were actually talking about that in in the documentary oh did they, they yeah didn't bring that up they didn't bring that up on the trailer at all yeah no. yeah well you know yeah but yeah they were so talking about that do. yeah they were talking about that they were talking about paying it was like has anybody even asked billy if he's okay coming every day and what are we going to pay him you know i mean they were they were talking about it, it was oh, a i'm sure he was theirs. thrilled are you kidding me he was oh. a young kid he was thrilled oh. he yeah. i mean he had the biggest smile on his face the whole time oh, he was happy yeah. to be there yeah, they were happy absolutely. to have him i mean they knew what they were getting it's not sure. like they were sure. trying to take advantage they knew mm -hmm. what he had yeah so yeah awesome. yeah it was great he, I, we're gonna have to pull like a marvelous mrs Maisel marathon or something you're gonna have to come over and we'll we'll, we'll yeah, watch I, him because yeah. it's worth it's worth it to see because yeah. it does pull on your heartstrings to see them oh, doing that i have to bring some tissues <laughs> well it's not like they're it's a crying moment but it does choke you up it's like yeah. oh man they well, were like so I said, amazing I was choked together. up with the trailer yeah. <laughs> you know yeah yeah and to see them young and goofy and doing their thing and right plus it's my favorite look for paul and yeah, yeah. oh yeah it's my favorite well, one. what's your what's your favorite beetle album i would have to say if if you're gonna force me to an album that it would mm -hmm. be the white album great album yeah my favorite was sergeant pepper <sighs> so, so good they're so good they're so good they're so good i know i, I love singing them um, oh me too <laughs> they're so much fun especially sergeant peppers that's a fun song to sing they're just they're just so good there's so many songs i was actually asking my mom about this how many thousands of songs do you think are in paul mccartney's head oh my god his own uh, oh other he could just, people he could just sit at the piano and just rattle off a, a new song i mean that, that guy's incredible. amazing incredible that guy's he's amazing incredible. if i if i had one person li living mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> who to me, it's Paul McCartney. Well, did you see um, the carpool karaoke with James Corden? I did. Oh, I did. That it's was phenomenal. That was incredible. What was? And then they go to the pub. Oh. And they can you perform. imagine? Can you, can you imagine being one of the oh people at the bar at the oh pub? My God. And it's like, oh my God, that's Paul McCartney. Oh my God, he's going to sing. Or just walking down the street and hearing that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because it's, he's so distinctive when they were doing in, in get back, they were on the street and they were interviewing people. And this guy goes to this girl, do you know who this is? She's like, yeah, it's the Beatles. And, yeah. and she's like, that's obviously Paul McCartney just singing. You can't fake him. He has a very distinctive voice. He's yes. very distinctive. I mean, mm -hmm. he's got like six voices, but, but each one of them is very distinctive and they're his and you know yeah. it instantly. Also, Paul McCartney just did a thing with uh, Rick Rubin for Hulu called uh, McCartney 321, where they kind of break down a bunch of Beatles songs and listen to oh, them track I'd by love track. To see that. I don't have Hulu. <laughs> oh, well, we'll have to, you'll have to come over for that too. Because it is really cool. Like they're, they're, they're isolating the vocal tracks. They're isolating some of the instruments. And he's oh, talking about, cool. yeah, he's talking about their decision making and all kinds of stuff. It's really awesome. It's very much worth the time. So we'll definitely have to set up a time to do that. Well, did you see McCartney inducted the Foo Fighters yes. to the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? That yes. was a couple months ago. That was awesome. Yeah. He said that his career and Dave Grohl's career were very similar in nature. You know, they both started with certain bands and then kind of tragedy yeah. struck. Oh, sure, sure. And then yep. they went out on their own and they had to mm -hmm. do this thing. And so there were a lot of similarities between the two of them. And, yeah. you know, Dave Grohl loves the Beatles and Paul McCartney. Of course. Oh, of course. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's obvious in the Foo oh, Fighters yeah. songs, you know. Well, uh, they I'm, like they, they like Queen too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But Dave Grohl did um, a couple of years ago. I think it was at the Academy Awards when they did with the In Memoriam. Mm -hmm. He sat and he did an acoustic version of Blackbird. Oh, nice! And it was it was it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Yeah, I mean, Love come the on, Foo Fighters, too. absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Um, let's talk about our favorite TV show. All right. Let's yeah. do that. Are you ready? Yeah. It's the Big Bang Theory. It's the Big Bang Theory. Yeah, definitely. One of my, one of my favorite shows, but definitely my favorite Letter B show. Absolutely. Without a doubt. 12 seasons and oh, I hated to see that. And I really did. I was really, I was really sad. I understood why Jim Parsons wanted to stop. Oh, well, but... sure. But I was like, oh man, it was oh, no. so, it was such a reliably funny show. And it, and it was getting good with everybody's relationships. Yeah. I mean, it was good from the beginning. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I mean, it was just evolving with everybody's relationships. Absolutely. I mean, Howard, you know, wasn't cringeworthy anymore, <laughs> <laughs> but I feel bad for poor Raj because he never found human love. Oh, but he found doggy love. <laughs> he's cinnamon. <laughs> cinnamon. I mean, that poor dog. Oh, I know what that poor. What do you put that poor dog through? Yeah. yeah. I, know. I know. But it was it was a fabulous show to watch for so long because, first of all, I'm a nerd, and I love oh. the fact that they made fun of, but also celebrated nerd culture, sure. and I really appreciated that. Sure. You know what I really liked. Um, all the special guests that came on oh, yeah. and the stars that they had for the parents, like Christine oh, yeah. Baranski. Oh, yeah. I, I love her. I yeah, love I love her. the fact that she's Leonard's mom and yeah, she gets along yeah. better with Sheldon than she does with Leonard. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> for sure. Know, they like call each other and he sends her flowers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and how about with, um, Sheldon's mom, Lori Metcalf. Mm -hmm. Penny calls her up all the time. Oh, yeah. It's well, like, she has to. I'm going to call your mom. <laughs> yeah, because that's her That's her ace in the hole. Yeah. I mean, she can get away with anything if she calls Sheldon's mom. Yeah, yeah. And, and the thing with um, Bernadette, mm -hmm. the, vo the voice that she does, I almost have to put on caption, whatever that is, CC. Yeah. I, I almost have to put that on because sometimes I just can't figure out what she says. And she, she talks fast and mm -hmm. she talks into, in that, that tone. It's very high. It's, yeah, very, it's very high. Yeah. And it's very fast. It's like a little girl. Although when they first got together, she was doing the Howard <laughs> that his mom was doing. I miss that. I do too. When I they were yelling too. at each other back yeah. and forth over the yeah. pancakes. Yeah. And he, he would call her, lie. he would call her his mother. It was like, he would slip. It's like, oh my God. Yeah. So good. 
It, it, it really was. And I love the fact that they had a good balance of women on that show, but the women yes. were also very smart. Like even, even though Pe Penny didn't even have a Penny... PhD, right. it was very emotionally intelligent and mm -hmm. that helped balance Sheldon out quite a lot. I love well, the dynamic. Well, she had the street smarts. Yeah. yeah. I love the dynamic that they had. Um, who, was, so, who was your favorite character? My favorite character is Sheldon. He is my well, favorite. Well, yeah. 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 But, but I, I really like Penny. Yeah, I, I do too. I really did. I really do. I, I, she was the heart of the show, really. If, if Sheldon was the head, she was the heart for sure. You know who else I liked? Hmm. I liked Stuart's character. <laughs> And I even like B Bowie Kripke. Oh yeah, Kripke. <laughs> he's 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 awesome. Yeah, both of those guys. I mean, um, there's just so just so many. And I, yeah. like I said, I love the the people that came on. And Will Wheaton kept on oh, coming on. His nemesis yeah. for a long time. Right, right. Nemesis. Yeah, yeah. Then became good friends with them, so that was yeah. cool. Stephen Hawking. They oh. always talked about like Bill Gates and oh yeah, Stephen Hawking. And yeah, I mean, physicists, real Nobel Prize winning physicists were on that show. Yeah, you know George yeah. Smoot. Uh, these people are amazing. But but beyond the the incredible science that actually took place, because they had a consulting physicist that would help them with all these equations and everything, the sci-fi characters that mm -hmm. were on, you know, you had William Shatner, yeah. you had Carrie Fisher, Nathan yeah. Fillion, Mark Hamill. I mean, just tons and tons of them beyond parents. I mean, they had Mark Hamill officiate Sheldon and Amy's wedding for crying out loud. <laughs> that was, that was great. It was awesome. Uh, James Earl Jones. Was oh on. yeah. Neil deGrasse Tyson, even though he's in Yeah. Scientist. And how yeah. about Bob, Bob Newhart? Oh, Bob Newhart was the greatest as oh. Professor Proton and then Proton, Yoda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I don't know, Sheldon, this is your, this is your dream. <laughs> I, I, you I just, I just love that show. And you know what? It's one of those shows that let's say that you're waiting for like a ball game to come on. Like I usually do like about seven or seven 30 and you need that fill in mm -hmm. half hour or an hour. I'll, I can always rely either on a local channel or like TBS mm -hmm. to have that. It's, it's either Big Bang or Mike and Molly, you know, and you just catch an episode. I have seen every episode. I can't tell you how many times oh, and it yeah. just doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. As a matter of fact, I, I've had all the seasons gifted to me and oh, I, all I of them. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And you can watch them anytime and they're good. If you're oh, in a bad yeah. mood, you can watch yeah. them and you won't be in a bad mood anymore. Yeah. It's just, yeah. they, no matter, just, no matter which episode, they were all good. They were all good. And I mean, yeah. some of them were really heartfelt too. Like when Sheldon hugs Penny for the first time, because she got him Leonard Nimoy's oh, autograph man. on a napkin. It's like, and, oh. and the look on her face. Oh is man. Like, oh my God. He's yeah. hugging me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right up into the last one where they get the prize and Sheldon spends yeah. his whole time yeah, yeah, yeah. giving them accolades, you know, because he's messed with them so much over right. the the previous two episodes, you know. These people are incredible. And they were together a really long time. Twelve years is a long time. Yeah. 12, to have a hit show. Twelve seasons, yeah. Awesome. You know what I really like too that they brought in um Amy. Mm -hmm. And she's, she's really a neuroscientist yeah, in real is. life. I yeah. mean, she's, she's a, she is so smart in real life. Mm -hmm. And she's, then her parents, her parents were, um, Kathy Bates and, uh, Teller. Yeah. Yeah. That's poor so guy. Cool. That's uh, yeah. Poor he's, guy. He's still not even getting any lines in this show. <laughs> <laughs> I think he had two. <laughs> uh, yeah. What a great show. What a great cast and, you know, and supporting cast. I love the fact that people were not afraid to go on it and, and be a heightened version of themselves. Like when you're mentioning James Earl Jones, like they were geeking yeah. out yeah. over Star Wars and everything. And, you know, he's not like that in real life, but he was just playing. And I, I love that people wanted to go on that show and also had the freedom to do that and felt comfortable doing that. You know, because yeah. he was being silly. I mean, they were doing karaoke, for God's sakes. I know. <laughs> and also, I want to mention briefly, uh, this is another show that has an awesome theme song that little guy loved. He would come running when he heard it come on. 
And do you know that they didn't the bare naked ladies did not want to do that? Yeah, because they didn't think they were going to get used. They thought they were going to go with somebody else. And that's something. Oh, another person was LeVar Burton. Oh, was yeah. On there constantly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just a awesome. favorite. Yeah. I love that he did not get along with them. <laughs> you know, they went to that party at Will Wheaton's house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Brent Spiner <laughs> was there and he opened up their toy and messed with their toys in the packaging oh my god they were so upset <laughs> do, you, do you remember when they were um on their way to one one of the shows and they were dressed up and they parked the car and then started doing some poses and then somebody steals the car from them yeah and they got a, a slurpee thrown at them or something like that <laughs> yeah they're going to comic-con yeah, I think I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and let me tell you something. Going to Comic Con. Oh my God, they they did such great makeup on them. Like, yeah, that was that Leonard was great. Being, yeah, Leonard being Captain Picard. He's like, right. I'm sweating through my bald cap. That was hilarious. <laughs> and Raj so being good. a wharf as a Klingon. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. my yeah. God, it was so, so good. good. So it was good. so good. Yeah. yeah. And then they had to go into that diner. And Sheldon was Data, right? Yeah. Yeah. Of yeah. Course. Yeah. 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 They had to go that's into that funny. diner. <laughs> that's so actually, that's actually the next generation is the one I really liked a lot. Don't get me wrong. I like the original Star Trek, but I really liked the next generation. This is tough for me because William Shatner, <laughs> William Shatner, was I know like a, a favorite human being of mine. Since you were a little kid. Yeah. I think he was my yeah. first celebrity crush. Yeah. William Shatner. <laughs> I loved him yeah. so much. But I really understood and grew up with the Next Generation cast. So, mm -hmm. yes, they have a very special place in my heart. And I would say that um, Will Riker was my favorite character on that because he had a lot of the similarities of Captain Kirk. Mm -hmm. And so he kind of took that space for me on that show because Picard was very professional and very good and he was great don't get me wrong I, I love Jean-Luc Picard but like Will Riker yeah. was a little bit more rebelish he, he had mm -hmm. a beard and yeah he, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah 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 he played this you know the saxophone or the no he played the trombone and he was very he, you know he was a little more roguish so I I liked him a lot on that show isn't it funny that the Big Bang Theory discussion turned into Star Trek <laughs> Well, it should because, oh, yes, because they were huge Trek nerds yeah. and, uh, and that's okay. I'm okay with that. <laughs> well, that pretty much does it for the letter B. Yeah. This is a pretty packed episode. A lot of stuff in there for yeah. sure. So we appreciate you listening with that. We're out of here. Thank you very much. See you next week.